Hi, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome to my channel. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to my channel and join me at Patreon. Link in the description. They said their goodbyes to everyone. Mike's dad was a little cool towards him, and as Mike gave his mom a hug goodbyes, he whispered, Be sure and let me know what dad says. She whispered back, I will. Masumi and Miyuki were back in the car heading for the party, and Miyuki said, I should really be mad at you for pulling that trick. But I'm not. In fact, I'm glad you did it. It's going to be really interesting to hear what my dad tells my mom. I didn't think you'd be mad at me. I thought it would be fun, and it was. The look on your brother's face was priceless, and he just couldn't find the words to say anything. That was worth it. The two girls were also priceless. They both treated you like you were a girl. I mean, all the questions about the kimono. Now, your dad is another question. He was his old self when you and your mom went into the kitchen. Is your mom going to talk to him? Yes. And she promised to tell me what happens. Your mom is a fantastic person. She knows about you, but was completely taken aback when she first saw you. What was the kitchen talk about? To start with, she told me about the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law talk you two had about me. So, you told her about everything that happened while I was with you in Japan. Not everything. I didn't tell her about going to the club that time. Why not? I didn't think she'd like hearing how much her son enjoyed dancing with the female to male cross dresser. I enjoyed dancing with everyone. But you should have seen you face when you were dancing with him, she said with a big grin. I would have rather have been dancing with you. And it didn't seem to bother you. It didn't. I just enjoyed watching you. You were having fun. So were you. Yes, watching you. They continued their friendly banter all the way to the party. They arrived at the party and went to park the car. But the party was at a private party center and had valet parking. The valet, noting two girls in the car, first opened the passenger side door and helped Miyuki out of the car. And then did the same for Misumi. The girls walked up to the door and the doorman politely opened the door for them. Miyuki politely bowed to him in thanks. As they walked into the room where the party was, Dr. Ruth, dressed as a very sexy Elvira, was standing greeting the guests. As Masumi and Miyuki walked up to her, she recognized Masumi, but not Miyuki. Dr. Ruth said, Masumi, I just love your costume. You knew it was me, Masumi said with a fake little pout. Honey, the Lone Ranger was a little taller than five foot, but it's really a cute costume. Satin pants, shirt and mask. And that 10 gallon hat is great. Did Mike come as Tonto? No. Mike is here. Isn't he? Yes, he is, Misumi said as she looked at Miyuki. Miyuki bowed and said, in a perfect feminine voice, Dizo Yoroshiko. Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth looked at Miyuki and said, Mike. Not tonight, Dr. Ruth. Tonight it's Miyuki. No, it can't be. Misumi. Tell me that this isn't really Mike. It's Mike, Masumi said with a big grin. But the voice, the look. I mean, you look too good. Thank you, Dr. Ruth, Miyuki said. The voice is something that I've been able to do for a long time. The look is all thanks to Masumi. If you don't win best costume tonight, I want to know why. You two kids go and have fun. I'll see you later. Miyuki and Masumi spent the night dancing with each other and others and just enjoying themselves. There was an unknown group of people who chose the 10 best costumes at the party. About an hour before the party was to end, the top 10 were called up on the stage. Miyuki was one, as was a gladiator, a very sexy witch, and seven others. The microphone was passed down from one contestant to the next, and they told who they really were. Miyuki was next to the last, and when she said, in Mike's voice, Hi, I'm Mike Gifford. There were some smiles from a few of the 60 or so people in attendance who knew, but the look on most people's faces was one of pure unbelieving awe. Dr. Ruth then went down the line, holding her hand over each of the 10 contestants' heads for an applause rating. The sexy witch's applause level was close to Miyuki, but Miyuki was a hands-down winner. For the rest of the party, many people came up to her and asked lots questions. There were a number of guys that asked what it was like to wear women's clothes. In most cases, Miyuki with a smile said, just try it. 
A number asked about the voice. She told them it was just something that she had always been able to do, change it to feminine at will. Most were just amazed that it was actually Mike. As the party was breaking up, Dr. Ruth and her husband were saying goodbye to everyone as they left. And as people were still talking to them, Miyuki and Misumi were almost the last to leave. And as they were leaving, Dr. Ruth whispered to Miyuki, Can I ask you something kind of personal? I guess. Are you a transvestite? Why do you ask? Miyuki asked, glancing at Misumi. You are just too good. You emanate femininity. Your mannerisms. Your speech patterns. They are just too perfect for a guy dressing as a girl just for a party. Miyuki again glanced at Misumi and shyly said, Yes, but please don't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. It will be our secret. And thank you both for coming. You really helped make the party a success. Everyone will be talking about it for a long time. Bowing as a proper Japanese girl would do, Miyuki said, Arigatou gozaimasu, Dr. Ruth. Thank you, Dr. Ruth. The couple arrived home, happy but tired. They had, had a good time. It took them a little while to remove Miyuki's makeup and return her to being Mike. Masumi asked, Did you have fun tonight, lover? I sure did. Did you? Yes. It was a great party. Only one thing. What? The stunt that you pulled, taking me to my parents. Are you mad at me? She said with a little pout. Yes. And I need to punish you for being so bad. He said, as he wrestled her to the bed, and dinner at the Giffords' house. Sunday, they were going to eat dinner this Mike's family. And Mike was really worried about what his dad's reaction to last night was going to be. He was really nervous, because his mom hadn't called yet, and they had to leave soon. In fact, he was so nervous, that he was pacing like a caged cat. Masumi finally got him to sit down, and to call his mom. He called, a little worried that his dad would answer, but his sister did. She told him that she still couldn't get over how good he looked as a geisha. He half-heartedly thanked her and asked to talk to his mom. Hi, mom. Oh, we had a great time. Ah, uh, did you talk to dad? And, I see. So, he knows about everything. Oh, great. You think? We'll see. See you in a little bit. Bye. Mike sunk down in the chair and just shook his head. Masumi asked, what wrong? After we left, mom had a long talk with dad about me. He was really surprised how good I looked. She told him a lot about what went on in Japan. She said that he wasn't very happy about the whole thing. But this morning, he seemed to have calmed down a bit. The drive to the Giffords' home was a very quiet one. Mike wasn't sure what was going to happen and if he really wanted to be there when it did. Masumi knew not to say much. As they pulled into the drive, Mike took a deep breath and got out of the car. He and Masumi walked up to the back door and into the house. His mom was in the kitchen, cooking, and said that dinner was almost ready. Masumi and Mike helped her put the plates of food on the table. And Mrs. Gifford called everyone else to dinner. The greetings were the normal pleasant ones, but Mike could feel a little tenseness with his dad. Dinner itself was pleasant. Even Paul was nice to his brother. After dinner, Misumi and Ruth helped Mrs. Gifford clear the table and bring Desert in. As they were sitting eating Desert, Mr. Gifford said, Mike, I thought your costume last night was very interesting. Then your mother and I had a long talk about you, and I wasn't very happy about what I heard. Do you want to explain? Do you want your brother and sister to leave? I'll try and explain. And know they are a part of this family and need to hear this too. What you saw last night was fun, fun for me, and fun for Misumi. Yes, I enjoy dressing and presenting like a girl. It's part of me, and I can't help it. So, you want to be a girl? No, sir. I don't want to be a girl. I don't want a sex change operation. I just enjoy wearing the clothes and presenting as a girl. How long has this been going on? For about as long as I can remember. I used to wear mom's and Ruth's things when I was home. And when I went off to college, I bought my own things. You wore your mom's and sister's things. And they didn't know. Mom told me that she did. But I don't think Ruth did. Ruth shook her head no. But a man wearing girl's clothes and looking like a girl just isn't normal. Dad, they're just clothes. 
Look at Ruth. She is on men's jeans and shirt. And no one thinks anything about it. True, she isn't trying to present as a guy. But there are girls out there that do. I feel very comfortable when I dress. It allows me to relax. I could be on drugs or drink. And cross-dressing hurts no one. I agree being able to pass as a girl goes farther than just wearing the clothes. But it's just another part of it that we enjoy. Dad, Masumi Broken, Mike is a very loving person. And being a cross-dresser is just a small part of him. When he told me that he liked girls' clothes, I took it as being just a part of him. And since I love him, all of him, I love that part also. I love it when he dresses. I have another girlfriend. And I've also enjoyed bringing that part of him out. A lot of this is my fault. I took him shopping in Japan. I taught him how to do his makeup and took him out for the first time. I've encouraged him to express his feminine side. And if this upsets you, I'm so very sorry. And the tears started to flow down her cheeks. Mike held her. Daddy, Ruth said, I think it's cool that Mike has a feminine side. I kind of wish Paul did, then he would be so mean to me. Well, Paul, Mr. Gifford said, do you have anything to add? No, sir. I'm staying out of this. I do, said Mrs. Gifford. As I told you, I knew a long time ago that Mike had a softer side and was using some of my clothes. I love these kids very much. And I see nothing wrong with Mike dressing like he wants to. Masumi, who's with him for better or worse, doesn't have a problem with it. So we shouldn't. If he likes going out as a girl and it's not hurting anyone, so be it. How many people know you dress like a girl? Mr. Gifford asked. There's you guys, the Matsushitas, Harley, but I think she saw it as a Halloween costume and Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth Halloran from the college. Yes. Great. Now it's going to be all over campus. Why do you think that? She's not going to say anything to anyone. There's no reason for her to. We'll see. It looks like I got upvoted in this matter. I don't really like it, but I guess I can live with it as long as I don't see you dressed. Masumi, I'm very sorry that I made you cry. That's all right, Dad. I'm just very sensitive to things that affect Mike, Masumi said. No, it's not all right. Mrs. Gifford said, Honey, come with me and we'll get you cleaned up. Mrs. Gifford and Masumi left the dining room. Mr. Gifford looked at Paul and Ruth and said, This goes no farther than this room. Understood. Yes, sir, Ruth and Paul said together. Mike got up and followed his mom and Masumi to the first floor half bath. His mom was wiping her face and comforting him. Mike said, honey, are you okay? Yes. I'm just so sorry that I started this whole thing. And now your dad is upset. Don't be sorry. You didn't start this. I did, many years ago. All you did was show me that it was really a big part of me and that you loved that part of me. Don't worry about dad. He'll get over it. Kids, I have an idea. When you get ready to leave, go along with me. What are you going to do? Mike asked. Something this family hasn't done for a long time and needs to start doing again. Mike looked at Masumi and shrugged his shoulders. The rest of the evening went fairly well. Everyone sat and watched the football game on TV and chatted. Mike and his dad even exchanged some pleasant words. As Mike and Masumi were getting ready to leave, his mom stood up and said, okay, everyone over here. We're going to restart an old family tradition that we should have never stopped. Now what? Mr. Gifford said. Mrs. Gifford glared at him a little and said, the family hug. Mr. Gifford kind of looked at her a little funny, but everyone wrapped their arms around whoever was on either side of them, and it was a big hug. Of course, there was the usual goodnight kisses and hugs. And when Ruth was giving Masumi an individual hug, she whispered, I think he looked very cute. Masumi gave Ruth an extra hug. On the way home, Mike and Masumi talked about the evening. She was so worried that things between Mike and his dad had become strained. Mike told her that his dad, who was standing next to him during the family hug, had actually given him an extra hug. And not worry about it, as his mom was sure to talk to him some more. Masumi said, you know, I've learned two customs from you that I really love. What's that? Tonight it was the family hug. And 
The other was carrying the bride across the threshold. Mike smiled at her. After arriving home, Mike unlocked the apartment door, turned to Masumi, picked her up, and carried her across the threshold. Why did you do that? Are you complaining? No. She wrapped her arms tighter around his neck. I did it for two reasons. I'll always think of you as my bride. And I love you. She kissed him. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access.